Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden, and I am way overdue for an update because a lot has been going on and I wasn't quite sure how to talk about it, how to tell the story. So I'm going to try to do so briefly now and then commit to creating a weekly vlog where I don't necessarily have to construct a narrative, but I'll just show you what's going on over the course of the week. Why? Because a lot's going on, and I think it's important. And I'm super fascinated by how things are changing in my life, in my training, in my research, etc. And I think it's important to document that. I am still recovering from a broken thumb, which I shattered on September 19th while roller skiing in Sweden. And that has shifted so many things in my life. So I think I'll show you some footage backtracking in this video after this introduction. But for right now, I'll just show you where I am today. I am left-handed, so my left thumb was broken. And just to give you an example of where I'm currently at, my right thumb can bend freely. My left thumb cannot. <laughs> I'm really limited in my range of motion and it hurts when I try to do that. So the right thumb can go all the way over and the left thumb is a pretty big difference in how much it can bend. And it's much thicker. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but my left thumb is now bigger than my right thumb. There's a lot of bony deposition here. And right here, there's a lot of bone that got deposited, which makes it difficult to bend. So I've got a lot of physical therapy yet to do. I am able to hold a pen and write now, finally, but it's not easy. Uh, so I've been teaching myself to write with my right hand, uh, which is a slow process. I don't want to call it tedious because I'm being very gentle and patient as I do things with my right hand that I would normally do with my left. And there's a helicopter flying very close to my window, which is strange. Anyway, <laughs> this thumb, which in the past would have sent me into a downward spiral of depression, has instead opened me up to new ways of engaging that are above and beyond anything I have ever done. So rather than making my life smaller, it's made my life bigger because of the tools that I talk about in my videos. Because these are practices that I employ throughout the day, every day. And those tools are about developing anti-fragility, which is a term that Nassim Taleb coined uh, in his book Anti-Fragile, which had a really profound effect on me when I read it several years ago. And now I'm actually getting to experience that. I break my thumb, and instead of things getting smaller, things get bigger. I didn't anticipate that. So this is fascinating. Same with my ankle. I thought that that diagnosis would really kind of put an end to things, but I've had the opposite response. Um, I'm finding new ways to engage and do more, so I'm no longer limited to my habitual ways of engagement. Uh, I'm exploring in new ways, which has allowed me to uh, increase engagement. Anyway, I'll have a lot more videos where I talk about this, but my training is through the roof. I'm well beyond last year's training already. And last year was the biggest training year of my life with 938 hours, and I'm already quite a bit beyond that. So that's fascinating to me, that at my age, I can take that large of a training load and continue to improve. So there's a lot to talk about, but just to give you a brief introduction to where I am right now, I will show you in a moment after this some of the things that I have been filming that I have not posted because I wasn't sure how to construct that narrative. But I'm going to let the narrative idea go and move into a vlog format where I post once a week. It's either going to be Monday or Friday. You tell me, what do you think, Monday or Friday? And I'll just 
catalog what's been going on so that way I can show you what I'm doing without weaving it into a story which is a little too complex at this moment. And this will allow me to do more where do I begin videos and getting started reboot videos which have been on the back burner as I've been trying to focus on how do I tell this story. So here we go. And I hope you're doing well. Let me know in the comments below what you're up to, how you're dealing with adversity, and how challenges may close you off or open you up. I'm finding right now that the most difficult time of year for me, late October through end of December, traditionally is my lowest volume of training, and it's where my greatest depressions happen and where I'm the least functional. This is the most functional I've ever been throughout this period of time with two catastrophic injuries. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, exciting and fascinating, and I will keep you in the loop. Okay, here's some old footage coming up now. I crashed roller skiing yesterday and injured my thumb pretty badly. It took my entire body weight at maybe 15 miles an hour. Uh, I don't think it's broken, but there's a lump on top that shouldn't be there. It's not on the other thumb. I think I may have uh, torn a tendon or ligament or at least stretched one. Uh, there's a lot of damage either way, but uh, no more roller skiing for me for a while. These are the components that I bought at Dollar Tree for a buck twenty-five each which I'm going to build harnesses for my forearms slash elbows to continue to do strength training. Going into the doctor to take the cast off, have another x-ray, see how it's healing, and then probably get another cast. Cast is off. And my hand is atrophied. It's crazy uh, how quickly <laughs> your hands atrophy. Um, I can't hold the camera with my mouth, but I would show you my other hand, which is significantly larger than this one. I've got a new cast, which I wear for another two weeks, and then they're going to do another x-ray. Um, one of the fractures is healing okay. The other one looks a little sketchy and they believe there may be some ligament damage further down uh, here where the thumb attaches to my hand. So in two weeks they're gonna check that out. Um, so not ideal and they said I'm definitely gonna lose some function in my thumb. But hey, them's the brakes. Cast number two is off. And I've got a really strange looking thumb now. <laughs> um, and the calluses from not being able to wash my hands vigorously. Fascinating. Anyway, it's, uh, I can't bend the knuckle much and it's all numb. We'll see. It looks so strange. It looks nothing like my other thumb now. I'm going to have some occupational therapy starting next week. They're going to put me in my fifth brace, <laughs> two casts and three braces. Um, and then I'm going to have to try to work with the ligaments and tendons that were also injured and are now short, shrunken due to being stuck in this position now for five weeks. So it'll be a while uh, before I get decent function out of my left hand. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how I've been dealing with having my dominant left hand, I'm a lefty, um, out of action. And all of the ways in which I have had to modify my daily existence and also modify my identity and its goals uh, so that I'm not in a saddened or depressed state, uh, which is something that I am, the tools and tactics that I'll be talking about, they, I applied them generally pretty much all the time now, but this has given me a unique opportunity to uh, apply them in a way that is surprising to me. Quite a few people have been saying to me that I must really be disappointed or that I must be really sad, that I can't 
ski, roller ski, strength train, can't do my pull-ups. And the reality is that I'm not sad. I'm not disappointed. Um, I thought I might be, and I was worried about that, but I've really gotten into just slowing down and getting creative and seeing what else is available to me. Now, that doesn't mean that there hasn't been any challenging impact on me. There has, to some degree. Um, but it's just something to work with. It's just something that adds to the challenge of this adventure. So that's how I'm framing it. It's an adventure. It's a, it's a puzzle. I don't want to say that it's a problem to solve because I'm really not seeing it as a problem. I'm seeing it as a puzzle to work with. Uh, like these are the tools you've been given. What can you do? It's like the TV show. I don't know. I don't watch TV, but I know there are cooking shows where they give you just a few ingredients and you have to create some extraordinary dish. Uh, so that's the way that this is showing up for me. I've got certain ingredients. What can I create? What can I do with them? Becoming bionic. <laughs> this is called maceration. It is not good. Day one out of the brace, and that is my range of motion. Ow, that is very painful. And it squeaks. I can feel it squeaking and grinding in there. They call that crepitation. Ah, ah, yikes. I don't know if I'm ever going to get full range of motion in that top knuckle again. Ah. He'll be going to altitude um, after Davos and uh, he'll stay there until the start of the Tour de Ski. He's made that plain as we see. So after more than two months, uh, I still have very little function in this hand. I'm still writing with my right hand, which is Getting neater, by the way, my penmanship is improving, but it's still very slow, very deliberate and awkward, but I'm starting to enjoy the process. Tying my shoes is still very difficult. Um, I can't do the manual labor that I would normally do at home on the farm. I can't engage in many of the projects that I'd planned to get going once I got back from Sweden here in the studio. There's a lot of things I want to do that I can't do. So it's really dramatically changed the way that I'm living my life. And that has been a stressor, but it's also been really informative. And it's allowed me to open up new avenues of being and investigation that were uh, not available to me, or let's just say I wasn't even aware of them prior to the incident. So one of the ways that things have changed is my training. I was doing a ton of roller skiing uh, before I got to Sweden, and then once I was in Sweden, I was roller skiing like crazy. Uh, obviously, now I can't do anything like that, and without a brace on there, I'm afraid of re-injuring it. So m the majority of my training is inside. Uh, even trail running is a little scary to me because I'm afraid of tripping, which I do regularly when I trail run, and using my hand to brace myself and re-breaking it. And the most interesting thing about this shift in training is that prior to the injury, I was not just roller skiing, but I was doing a ton of strength training. I had gotten really good at pull-ups and chin-ups and working on muscle-ups and obviously couldn't grip a bar. I can grip a bit now. I'm doing a little bit of hanging. But it forced me to come up with novel ways to train and I really got hooked on them. 
So in the past, my strength training might be 20 to 30 minutes. Now it's often well over two hours. So I'm using my polling machine with some modifications and I'm on there for an hour or more at a time. And that's really exciting because I'm getting strong in ways that I was not prior to the accident. And I can feel all of the muscles uh, engaged in pulling mechanics and also in pull-up mechanics. I can feel them developing in new and interesting ways that's kind of exciting. So had I not been injured, I probably would have taken the same experimental approach that I had been employing with my random pull-up, chin-up strength training and the roller skiing. But now, even though I can't go out and roller ski, my polling endurance is significantly improved uh, because I jumped right into the polling machine once the, the thumb was broken. I quickly figured out a way to modify it. So I'm very excited to get back on snow, if indeed I can get back on snow and uh, continue the strength training that I'm doing here, continue with at least 90 minutes a day, um, some days maybe up to three hours, and ski on top of that. Uh, and that's going to be fun to see what the results are. Anyway, more videos to come. Uh, it's not easy for me to turn the camera on and talk to it anymore, but I will do my best. I will try.